It is time, young one, to once again put on the mantle and the hood, and to go out into the world for my sake. You know, you could just go solo and start a crusade, you know? Kill everything by yourself. Wait, who brought this guy in? Shoot, shoot, go away, you crazy zealot. <laughs> now, where was I? Ah, yes. Go out and explore the world. Embrace their people and bring them to me. Uh, what about those shadowy guys over there? Hmm, let me see. New specific backgrounds, extra per- Wait, what? Never get sacrificed by shadowy ass. You know what? Just go ahead and get rid of them. Don't even remember ordering backgrounds that are immune to my power. Oh. Okay. So, what about those shadowy guys over there? Wait, what are those guys? Skip it about and that Let's... let's not talk about that, shall we? Welcome to Season 9, Episode 1 of the True Believers Campaign. We are back with Legends PTR and a brand new mod, as you may have already picked up from the cool intro that we have there. Hope you enjoyed that. The Dav Cool Rising mod is here and here to stay. We are going to go right back to the basics, bringing back a cultist origin playthrough. Slightly different than you'd expect because we want to make it interesting and have a bit of a twist to it. And just go old school, basically OG cultists. Uh, yeah, just going to have a lot of fun with that this season. And yeah, just very keen to see where we can go with it and how far we can take it. And how strong we can get and hopefully not get wrecked along the way. You know, the usual. Regardless, we are on the latest Legends and PTR builds. And the latest Davco Rising builds. Uh, there's been a few little changes for PTR, as you know. They love to rearrange the perk tree, so there's been a little bit of fluff around with that. So we're going to have to get used to a few perks in the wrong spots compared to what we're used to seeing. Uh, they've added a couple of cool perks like Blitzkrieg and Sundering Strikes. So we'll be able to play around with that. Some wildling traits have been added, but that you guys probably know from the streams. Uh, but other than that, uh, Legends has added a bit of buffs to shields, which is really nice. The durability, which is very, very helpful because durability is one of the most important things for a shield. If your shield's broken, you're screwed. So, very happy to see some little changes as things go on. But, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So... Brand new campaign, cultists as you have seen them before. Start with a group of five cultists now, which is actually maybe not as how you've seen them before. Legends has done a bit of a redo with their cultist origin. Uh, a little bit not the way I want it to be, but we can always tweak it to the way we like. So, what we're going to do is play it our own way, but I will still show you what has happened. Uh, the same thing happens, which is the candles and the sacrifices, which allow you to level up your bros perks. Uh, cultists do cost 25% less to buy and maintain, but everything else is 25% more expensive. It doesn't say it there, but it is. Uh, so, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, one interesting thing as well, which I'll show you when we get in, is Davko will not sacrifice his chosen elite, and I think that's bull. Complete bull. Davkul does not discriminate. There's no such thing as Chosen Elite. And we're going full cultist this season. Uh, also, let the blood flow. All cultists gain whip skills and favor fighting nobles and caravans, which is very nice indeed. Uh, we're going with the Undead Scourge this season, just because we don't do it enough. And uh, we might as well see what happens when there's more crazy fights and invasions happening all across the map and see how we can handle that. Don't know if we can handle it. But we'll see what we can do. I'm keeping the seed constant, uh, so we'll go with this one. It's a completely random seed that I just saved. Uh, I've got no idea what's going on with it, but we will hopefully have a decent set of brothers to start with, but I've got no idea. Probably garbage. Uh, but yeah, the True Believers will start with usual legendary combat difficulty. Uh, beginner and starting high funds is the usual for economy and starting funds because, yeah, it's just a pain if you don't do it that way. Uh, regardless... Let's go with our usual five factions, 35 settlements, all trade buildings available, and decked out citadels. And crafting recipes unlocked, world economy, bleeds as kills, skip camp tutorial, and our favorite, 
dynamic perks. We're skipping the scaling as usual because we find other ways to make the game hard. We don't need the game to just give us impossible fights if we're in certain areas of the map. Uh, without any other adieus, let's jump into our cultist run. Welcome to the cultist run. We put the woman and the child in the barn, which you have surely already found in ashes. They were knocked unconscious, for he does not seek their pain. Please do not dwell upon their demise. They are with him now in their passing. I have been freed of all obligation to do what must be done. Not all can see him, not all should, but see him they will, for Davkul awaits us all. Yes, he does indeed. Now, with this origin, I did briefly mention it, but uh, there are three new backgrounds which we will touch on just briefly before we get rid of them. Hopefully you enjoyed the fun little intro clip. And yeah, we, we're not going to deal with these backgrounds, and you will see why in a moment. Uh, they, We do have the cheaper cultists. We do have the more expensive than everyone else. Um, all cultists do get the True Believer perk for free, which is very nice. Lovely to have a free perk for the crew. Uh, even though the True Believer is not the, like, the best perk in the game, but I wouldn't say no to a free perk. Uh, and Davkul awaits us all. Exactly. So, the three backgrounds that have been added to the game are as follows. The Magister is the big one. Comes with a bunch of extra stars, a little bit of extra stats. Uh, but, Davkul sees this one as too important to sacrifice, and therefore will never ask you to do so. Kind of counterintuitive to Davkul gets everybody involved. So, we don't like them on the basis of concept, and, holy crap, do you see that? That is 34 bucks a day. Normal cultist, 6 bucks a day. Fancy cultist, 34 bucks a day. Ah, uh, no. No, there's no way we're paying for him. I know he comes with a free perk. He comes with Rally the Troops. So he's kind of like your banner slash trophy dude, because he's got so much stats. Well, not so much, but just a nice amount of stats and extra stars. But still, still, no, no thank you. Away you go. Next up is the Husk. 23 bucks a day, which already is a bit of a yikes. Um, Davkul sees this one as spent goods without any value and will never ask you to sacrifice them. Once again, what do you mean, spent goods? Cultists are just... Anyone can be sacrificed. That's the whole idea. And we will do that forever. Now, the thing with Husks, though, is they're kind of weaker than normal cultists because they have a reduction in resolve. Now, this one's not really showing the right resolve, because he's fearless and he's got the candle. But technically, husks have a weaker resolve, um, and that's why they're called spent goods. So, yeah, we'll say goodbye to you, buddy. And last, but certainly not least, is the Lurker. Now, these guys aren't immune to the sacrifice events. They can be sacrificed, but they cost 24 bucks a day, roughly. Uh, which is really expensive. They don't have bad resolve. This one actually has really good resolve at the moment. Um, but these guys are technically your ranged cultists as your backgrounds. Now, I never really thought cultists had a weakness to them. They're basically a jack-of-all-trades, in my opinion, and can become practically any role in your party, depending on their roles, depending on their stars, depending on their perks. So cultists, yeah, they can do almost anything. So I don't think a specific background that is a cult specifically for ranged, is required for this run, especially not one that costs 24 bucks a day. So, goodbye to you, buddy. And then we're left with our two OG cults. Just basic cults, happy to have them, happy to spend six bucks a day for them. So it allows us to have a cruisy start, allows us to build up, choose our fights, and basically build up the way we want. We're going OG, the true believers are here and ready to rumble. But before we can get into it all, I do want to do a couple quick explanations. We are using a few new mods. Maybe you've seen it from the intro, maybe you didn't recognize it. But the Davkul Rising is a very cool addition mod to the game. Kind of like a mini overhaul because it adds some cool new enemies called Davkul Cultists. But they're not your average cultists. They are heathens in our eyes because, as you saw before with the intro, Davkul does not seek their pain. Davkul accepts all, and all shall join. Uh, the cultists that are in question are evil in one way because all they do every single day 
And for the rest of the game, not every single day, but whenever they have the chance, they are going to raid villages, they are going to kidnap villagers, and bring them back to their locations and sacrifice them to increase their strength. And increase their numbers, of course, because, you know, they can convert them as well and all that fun stuff. So, uh, we're on a slight ticking time bomb there, as these cultists will wander the map. They do start in random locations. There is sometimes in the wilderness, sometimes near cities. They do like hanging around cities a little bit more often. They'll have random scouting parties. Uh, they usually do start near your first town. So in the game, your first town is unique. And it's most likely somewhere nearby. And you'll be able to tell where they are because... Let's quickly go to the town and show you. Because there's probably here. They're not here. Okay, so unluckily for us... They're not next to this town. They might be near someone else. But there is usually an indicator that tells you a town is getting raided or um, their villagers are getting sacrificed and, you know, all the fun stuff like that. Uh, so then you can sort of pinpoint-ish where the cultists are coming from. Uh, there's a few other cool things with the cultist origin. There are fancy enemies, a uh, few events, as far as I remember, and a legendary location. And a few more little, you know, fun things we'll find along the way. So there's that. Now... Other than that, we are playing with a couple of quality life mods. We're playing with the event frequency mod 200 to make events happen roughly every two days instead of the usual, I think it's like three days or so, or even four. Because uh, ever since the Blazing Deserts came out and obviously all the mods we use, the event pool is really, really flooded. And it's very hard to get good events happening. It's going to be just all sorts of random stuff. So having that happen more often allows a playthrough not have to last hundreds of days before you get the events you like to see. Especially with cultist events being more common uh, with the event, uh, with the origin that we're playing with. And yeah, we want to have sacrifices and conversion attempts happen when they're meant to happen. So we're going to try and allow that to happen more often. Uh, the other per uh, mod that we're going to play with is Settlement Tooltips. I can't show it here because this is not... There's no events happening on this settlement, but every single settlement, when they are raided by caravans, uh, if they have uh, green skins attacking, if there's cultist events, all sorts of stuff will happen, and you won't really know what's affecting the town. So the settlement tooltips allows us to see the exact numbers of what's happening. I've used this on my personal gameplays before, but I don't think I've ever used it on this channel. But I am proud and happy to bring that in for you guys to see how that works. But before we have anything else to do, we need to name our cultists. So if you guys want to be a part of this series, please do comment below the name you'd like to be in the party. Uh, whatever you get assigned to is whatever you get assigned to. There's not much in terms of tailoring builds, as we're just trying to build as the character has their stats for it. So hopefully you enjoy that. But if you want to be a part of it, please do comment below. Um, our subs to our Twitch channel at the moment do have priority, so we have a list already. Um, but you guys can be added to the list uh, as time goes on. But our first cultist right away, Barlow. Welcome to the crew, Barlow Q. And at the moment, this cultist is looking very good with melee attack, and I am very keen for his prospects. His defenses are a little lacking, so I might go with some sort of reach build. And the only reach build that could be really made out of here is a reach flail, and I am not saying no to that. We have done wonders with reach flail builds before, and I'm happy to have them again. Uh, next up on the chopping block is uh, Digrin. So welcome to the team, Digrin. What is your character looking like? And immediately, I already see that melee defense is looking quite strong. And you've got shield experts, so I'm very happy to see that. So we are going as a medium tank, because that's all we have options for us. Very happy to have it. So we've got a tank and a damage early on. Uh, let's hope they survive. And let's hope we can increase the party size. So first off, tank gets some defensive armor. Uh, we'll switch out the helmets. So our tank actually has a little bit of armor. Now we need to equip ourselves up with some decent stuff. Check the quest. It's a delivery. We love those in the early game, so I think I'm going to accept that for sure. Uh, we try and make some money. We have food galore. Probably grab a net. Pitchfork's a bit expensive. A spear for 95 and 100. Those are crucial in the early game. That is a wonderful pickup. A cheap buckler shield and 100 bucks for a wooden shield. Not the best in the world, but we'll take it. Also, two very cheap 
armors. Two very cheap helmets. What a great start. Absolutely great start. Uh, let's equip ourselves up with those. Nice. 85 and 45. Fairly decent. And with a spear in hand... We may just survive our first fight. That's the trick. It's a possibility. A possibility that could exist. Now, before I get ahead of myself, we need to check for recruits. Two people cannot survive very well in this game. Can we have friends? There is a thief. Uh, not really what I'm looking for. Now, we have to be a bit more picky this season because cultists cannot convert everybody to be a cultist. There is a narrow selection of what can be turned. So we're looking for thieves, pit pockets, and dumb shield maidens as our tanks. Uh, poachers and shepherds and dumb hunters, if ever possible, as our ranged bros. And for melee, we have a lot more choices. Militia, miner, houndmaster, grave robber, brawler, and butchers are my key choices. But we can go with fishermen if they ever roll well. I wouldn't say no to a good fisherman. But that's not a good one. And finally, last but not leastly, we do need a bunch of sacrifices. So, nuns and monks are great cheap sacrifices to have in your back ranks. Uh, so we'll collect those later on. But for the time being... <sighs> Iron Lungs Athletics sounds really good. He doesn't have anything else that's good. Ah, he's not good enough. Plus one, plus one is not bad in terms of melee and defense. Pull arms if he fails, cleavers if he's good. All the makings of a capable fencer, I don't care about that. Light armor, fast steps, brutal and vicious. Oh, he's got really good initiative. Oh, that is true, he could be a fencer, but you don't make fishermen fencers. You just don't. I'm going to save my money, he's not worth it. I'm going to hope for something better. Uh, let's do this delivery quest. Make some money out of that. Do I buy these amber shards? No, it's probably not the best price for them. Okay, we were wandering off to Felsig. Without any attacks along the way, because we are not combat ready. Oh, wait, we'll stop off at Sandhoom first. Oh, and I can show you immediately uh, what the settlement tooltips does. Disappearing Villagers has a buying items of minus 25%. And selling items at an increased price for 25% to you. So you're selling things to them, 25% reduced. So it's bad to sell to them because they're buying at 25 less. And it's bad to buy from them because they're selling at a higher price. And the worst thing of all, especially in the early game, is 50% less recruits. So we're not going to have a good amount of choices here. Though there is a lot more than expected. Uh, fish, fishmonger is a good choice. <gasps> Defensive but greedy. I think we can live with it. Do you have shield expert? Yes. Oh, that's a potential. That's a potential. Uh, apprentices, no. And nothing else. Okay, did we land a good one or a bad one? Oh, we landed a giant tank. No way. What luck. Rolls a 12. Fishmongers, you know, sometimes they just get good. Goodness me, welcome to the crew. Stefan, you are going to be our nimble tank. Nimble, shield expert, we've even got dodge if need be. We have alert. We've got good health because of the tough. We could even go nimble dodge tank, that's insane. Now let's hope he doesn't die. <laughs> and hope he gets converted before we do a sacrifice event. Oh, dear. Let's hope it works out. Uh, let's give you the spear and shield, because you're going to have better defenses already. Look at that. 17 and even more because of how bucklers work. Oh, I'm liking the looks of that. Uh, Barlow with the reach will probably give you the flail and the net. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sweet. I am I am stoked for that. Let's keep going. Uh, marketplace, do you have anything we need? Try and grab more shields. 139 is a little rough. I might hope for a better price. Uh, 186 for a Gambeson. That's not bad. I know the price is a 25% more, but that's not bad at all. And then another 30 helmet. I'll take that. 
Uh, no other good prices, and I shouldn't really spend too much here. Though, I'll probably take a throwing net to add to Barlow's arsenal there. And Stefan on 65 is looking pretty decent. Nice. Okay. On to the next town. Nice money. Ooh, it's a mining town. Oh, uh, that's a horrible tank. Now, grave robbers sometimes come with good stats, so... Yes! Yes, that's what I was looking for. Swords, cleavers, stabs, throwing weapons. So, if he fails at being a good melee bro... Hmm. Hmm. We could give him a reach cleaver. That could work. Worst comes to worst, he goes throwing weapons. Clubfoot is not great, but he's even got dogs. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's try out the miners first before we go. Nope, that's useless. That's useless. That one's a little better. But out of all of these, I'd probably go for the Grave Robber. Yeah. It's a lot of money to spend, but don't disappoint me. Oh, he's great. He's absolutely great in every area. He even has 11 base defense? No way. And shield expert. He could be almost anything he wanted to be. What's the right call, though? Okay. What's the right call? Do I make advantage of the hybrid build? He's got quick hands. He could go... Yeah, we might go two-handed... Oh, no, 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 no. Reach, cleave, um, slash, throw. It's a weird build. I, it, it's mainly because we don't have good masteries. I wish we had different masteries on here. Eh, it'll work. It'll work. And for the name, welcoming Raike. Welcome to the crew, man. A little expensive, but let's hope you get converted soon. Now, one good thing, other than the fact that uh, they're very dissatisfied because of what madness have I walked into. Welcome to the cult, bro. <laughs> let's, uh, let's try and convert you soon. But, here's the one good thing about starting with only two cults. Is, we can't sacrifice anybody. You need three people to sacrifice, so we are not going to accidentally kill Stefan or Raike early on. We will be able to convert them before we sacrifice them, so that is the good strat. Unless we somehow find another cultist along the way. Uh, this will be a safe point for the moment. Uh, we shall give Raike a spear and better armor. And uh, we'll have to buy some stuff in the shop. We can't hire anybody else. We're running out of money. Is there a quest that we can do? Follow the tracks. Hmm. I would like to do that if we're geared up enough. And ooh, a pitchfork. Ooh, I like the looks of that. It's 92 bucks. Yep, yep, I think instead of having whips, even though I, I like whips, they're great against people with no armor, but I can't say no to pitchforks and a shield. But for the most part, I think we're ready. I don't know if we're going to win, but at least we're as ready as we'll ever be with three people with shields and spears and a nice pitchfork to start us off. Uh, da, 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 da. is there anything else I could buy? No. There's there's practically nothing here that's going to help us. So, we might as well try. Now, we have to make sure when we fight these guys that they're not thugs. Okay, they're around the bend. Uh, we can deal with rabble in the early game, but thugs are a little bit rough for us. I spoke too soon, didn't I? Of course it had to be thugs. How many enemies? That's eight enemies? There's no way we win this. A single dog and at least two to three archers. <sighs> nope, 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 nope. We'll go find some more work somewhere else. Uh, Weshenshat should be able to give us a better quest, please. 
Yes, three tier ones. Uh, bring inside a location for four. Oh my goodness, no way. Follow the tracks for three thirty. That's more expensive, but maybe it's full of rabble. Uh, a caravan a day to the east. I might just do the caravan. <laughs> it's probably the only thing we can do. Is there anything good in here? Uh, there's two rat catchers, but no, we don't have the money for it. Now, the goodness and the best part about us starting with low, low cultists is the cost per day is 34 bucks, which is very, very manageable. So it really allows us to pick and choose our fights. I don't care about the slight relation losses of that last encounter. Oh, a good shield. I'll pick it up. Uh, Rikate, you get the better shield, my man. Bucklers are cool and all, but I can't say no to a wooden shield. Can I get better armor? No, I cannot. So, let's try it. Let's try our luck. Um, actually, wait, let's abandon the other ones. Uh, follow the tracks. I'll, I'll accept the follow the tracks quest just to see what it is. Oh, ambition time! Friendship might be hard to get, but out of six men, a ruin, and 2,000 bucks, I think friendship's the easiest one to get. <laughs> so we'll try that. It's eight thugs. No freaking way. There's no way we beat eight thugs. Uh, there's a brand new quest since we abandoned, and it's a delivery? Ooh, that's easy. I'll take a delivery quest. I was going to do the caravan, but delivery is just easier to do. Okay, we're wandering the map, delivering as cultists. Knock, knock, here's your Amazon Prime delivery. Uh, don't worry about our robes and hoods and our wonderful banner and all of the weird words we keep saying. Uh, but yeah, please, we are we're very friendly. Uh, have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Davkul? Yes? No? Well, then let's just introduce you to them. <laughs> okay, so Caravan to the Day of the West is probably the easiest quest to take. Uh, follow the tracks for 310 is probably just going to be thugs again. <sighs> Should I even try? No. I'll just do the caravan. And to start us off with the caravan, let's get into some medicine. Easy way of saving yourself some money in the long term. And, yeah. It's safer than training, because training gives you too many injuries. And there we go! Our first caravan complete. Took no time at all. Nine units of medicine. And the towns are liking us more, and you have problems with monsters. <laughs> Not a brave enough boy for this! Good luck, my boys. Another shield for cheap. Oh, I'd like to grab that, but I don't have the... M I do have the money... But I need that to buy more people. No. Uh, disappearing villagers, well supplied. Let's find somewhere else to go. Uh, Thunfest, you're not going to do anything for us. I want to take the river boat to New Ditch for 20 bucks. Why is everybody have disappearing villagers? It's probably those cults, but we can't even tell. It's probably just monsters. Yep, it's just monsters. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. That's a cheap fisherman. There's a cripple. That's a $2,900 militia? Who in the world's gonna pay for that? Holy crap. Uh, I'm gonna check out this fisherman and be insanely surprised that he's got double defense. And no shield expert. Ah, I was looking for it. Hmm. Hmm. I can't bring myself to do it. Like, he's got one range skill. But drunk is annoying to deal with. <sighs> yep, yeah, no. We gotta be picky. We've gotta be picky. We can't be too picky, but we gotta be a little, little bit picky. Uh, Dystat, please. Please save us from our slight issues. Money is fine. We just need XP, we need more bros, we need conversions happening. 
Ambush trade routes, of course. Follow the tracks for 340. That sounds expensive. Brigands for four... Mm. A delivery! Ha <laughs> ha! More our type of things to do. Uh, peddler, no. Cripple, no. No. Fisherman for 187. No, no. I don't have money to try him out and buy him. And I'm not going to randomly, blindly buy a fisherman. I will, however, holy crap, buy a good armor base for 100 bucks. Sweet. Right, Kate? Looking nice and snazzy on 55 armor. That's going to keep you alive a little bit longer. And I really wish I could buy the second one, but we have no money for it. I could sell the flail, but we might need that. I could sell the sword, actually. That's kind of garbage. And the pickaxe. Do I sell the flail? Two-handed weapons in the early game is not the way to go. I think I have to sell it and buy a better armor piece. That will serve us well a lot more than a two-handed flail will. And happily, Barlow gets some armor. I was considering giving it to Diagrin, but it might be overkill to give him an extra 55. Uh, so, yeah, everyone's in good armor, everyone has good weapons. We're ready for a fight, just not one with thugs, because they have way too much compared to us. Uh, let's quickly decline the Brigant location, because there's no way we beat that. Uh, we can check the Follow the Tracks quest first. Wait, where's the tracks? Ah, they went this way. I hate it when the tracks are a bit off the mark. Just darn thugs. Everywhere I go, I see his face. It says our company strength's 14, so come on, please give us a break. There's a tier 2 available. It's a caravan. Oh, it could give us some nice money. And if we get attacked, we'd have friends. A day to the north to, where is this? Wombald. Hmm. I don't see it. Unless that's the guy we're delivering it to. Oh, it's of Waldmark. <laughs> okay, so Waldmark's not that far away. It's just there. We can get a hundred bucks for going there, or 260 plus a fight, maybe, to Schneeberg, two days to the northeast. Oh, that's not too bad. That just makes us do a loop-de-loop. -loop. Yep, I'll take the caravan. I think that might be the better choice. Also, we are running out of food, so that saves us buying food. Oh, and here we are, the first event of the series, especially a cultist event, is nice to see. This is the random cultist joins. Now, unfortunately, the random cultist that joins sometimes can be a husk, but it's not a husk this time! A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. And he's really good at range. And he has two options to be ranged, holy crap, that's good. Uh, and Lumbering doesn't help. Swift does, a little bit. He's not good at melee, we'll just give up on that thought. I, I like that, and the best part about these cultists that join is you get free armor and weapons, even though it's not a weapon, that's, that's literally just a stick with lashes on it, that's all it is. Uh, but regardless, we get a free brother joining, so Slow and Steady wins the race. Uh, we have a ranged bro in the party. Very, very happy to have. Uh, what are we going to do with him, though? 73 to 83, I'd like some more accuracy. So crossbow sounds like the play. Yeah, it really does sound like the play. Bows are okay, but I need accuracy. He's got big game hunter. Wow, what a roll. That's a lucky perk. He's got all the cooking perks as well. Sweet. 
We have a crossbow cook. And next on our naming list, we've got Stefan, Digrin, Barlow, and Raike, Uh is Dennis. Welcome to the crew, man. Number five. Now, the only problem with having a third cultist that we didn't dismiss because it's not a husk is... Um, we can have sacrifice events now, so we might just self-sacrifice Stefan or Reike sometime in the near future uh, with the constant reoccurring events. That's good for you three, it's just not good for either of these guys that we spent money on. So let's hope we get a conversion before we get a sacrifice. I, I like that very much. So let's get you geared up with some slightly better armor and a slightly better helmet. Oh, we don't have a better helmet. Ah, oh, but I know what I can do. I can give your armor to someone else. Because you're meant to be ranged. So we'll give you a... We'll give you the nets. Oh, I knew it would happen eventually. Someone who can use nets properly for us. Very happy to have that. So we have a ranged bro, which means... Enemies who only have melee bros will start to attack us in terms of... They won't sit back and make us rush them in a fight. This is actually better than I expected. And we just instantly get everyone to level 2. Holy crap, that's amazing. No? No! No, we're literally 2 XP off. Of our three first bros, I was like, come on, that has to be enough to get them to level two, and it's not. Oh, we could do a training session and instantly get them to level two. Uh, though Dennis, our brand new guy, has not got XP from our little fights, and not little fights, our little quests of delivery and stuff, so he has not been able to get to level two. Darn it, I was jumping the gun there. Regardless, a very, very valuable quest for the team. Uh, rated with less recruits is annoying. Rebuilding and well supplied isn't too bad. Oh, butchers are nice. But that's too expensive for us. So we're not going to look to get a new bro. We're going to look to try and not do that. No, there's no way we win with that. Copper for free. Oh, look at that. That is free money. Less than what it's worth. I will buy that. I will buy some food. And an armor attachment for 36 bucks. That means we have one day worth of crowns. Slight issue, but it's worth it. Totally worth it. Let's go make some cash. Uh, are we close to the payday? We just paid. Uh, there is a big city here. There's a big castle there. Let's head south. Oh, there's a castle there too. Okay, let's head south. Try and pick up a quest to earn some money. If not, we go and sell the copper for a profit. Cultist at the Cultist Den. Okay, we found where the first Cultist Den is. Uh, we are not doing it. Hell no. Uh, cultists are very scary in the early game, and I don't want to see them in the late game. But 450 crowns is a lot. And it said it was southeast of Strodorf. Strodorf. So it's somewhere here. That is going to be an issue. That means one of these towns is going to be pillaged. And there's going to be random cultists running the roads. So we have to remember, this area is going to be difficult. So I am never going to do that quest this early on. We're going to set a location. Mm. Actually, it's only 360. I'm going to come back to that quest. In all honesty, that, that could work. Selling for 256. Instant profit. They're buying am buying money for 10% more. Oh, sweet. They got ambush trade routes, which means they're in more dire supply. I'll sell that at a profit immediately. Uh, anything else I can buy to upgrade my guys? Not really. No. I'll buy some food. That keeps us going a little bit longer. And I might try this brigand's location quest, because... It's northeast. It might be close to the cultists. Uh, because maybe it's full of rabble. You never know. There's a chance. 
There's a chance. Uh, how healthy are we looking? All the armor is sorted and as best it can be. Oh, I know what I need to do. Barlow shouldn't take hits. Now, shouldn't is expressed here because he shouldn't be taking hits. So he shouldn't need the armor. So I'm going to give Digrin a bit extra armor. Stefan's on 120, 80 for Raike. Let's hope this works. Let's hope this works. And let's hope we don't get ambushed by anything. Uh, I want to take this at night. Ah, fudge, Dawn. Dawn comes, but we'll try it. And we'll quickly see what's on the enemy team. It's eight, and they're above ground to us. And we're wavering to start the fight. Uh, if we re-roll roll the fight, oh, oh, wait, it's all rabble. Yes, it's all rabble. Okay, we retake, retake the fight. And we have a favorable outcome. Okay, we got this. We can end on a good fight. Let's freaking go. That's what I like to see. Oh, the end screen pops out and shows you exactly what it's looking for. We are wavering, but I think we've got this. Bandit rabble are doable. Absolutely doable. Oh, thank God they aren't thugs. Maybe I can't do Follow the Tracks quests anymore. Because somehow they got buffed maybe recently, and now they have all thugs and all the locations of rabble. That's hilarious. It should be the other way around. Follow the Tracks should be easier, and locations should be harder. But I'm not complaining. For free money. Though the poacher is going to be scary if he rolls on 76s. Holy crap. Not liking the look of that. We need to rush them yesterday. 17. Oh, no. Oh, no. Dennis? I think you need to throw nets more than you need to shoot your bow. Uh, your, your sling. Is the dog attacking us? No, because there's two range versus one. Understandable. Then we shall move as quickly as we can, to, as close as we can to them. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's engage them in melee and let's see what they do. The dog runs in and scares Stefan. That's not a good start. We don't need people fleeing this early on. And he gets stunned with a loot to the face. Good job. Guitar to the face, Stefan, and he gets stunned. Crap. 67's Digrin. Come on, we need to hit them. Yes, Raike with the hits. 44.50? Barlow, let's go. Okay, the scary guy is the flanking one. Mainly because he has the accuracy, but it's not because he has a good weapon or anything. I think I need to throw the net on him. I know, how weird is that? Throwing a net at a rabble. Dennis misses his uh, slinging, that's fine. Next turn, he can re-equip a net and throw it if he needs to. Okay, that's fine. Trying to flank. We'll live with it. Digren with the kill. Beautiful kill. Let's go. Okay, Barlow, we move closer. And we missed the 58. Unfortunate. Uh, Raike, we chase this guy down. And miss. Mmm, 65. I know it's just rabble, but we could get a little bit more accurate. Uh, we'll do this, wait, and see if we need to use the next net. Mm, we technically don't need it right away. Yes, Stefan, a good 49. I'm going to go for the throw on the 24. Nope, that didn't work. I'm going to leave Dennis here as bait. If he gets surrounded, that's fine. There's only one guy that's going to be annoying with it. One, two, three... No, he doesn't. He goes for Barlow instead. Uh, Stefan's running out of armor. Barlow gets the headshot. I wish that was a body shot, though. We have a 30% chance to hit the head. Ouch. Uh, I want to ignore this dog. But he doesn't want me to ignore him. Fudge! He rolls the 29, I miss the 44. Come on, where's the fairness in that? Stefan might need to shield wall here. 
Raike, one of the 65s hits. That's very good. Oh, I desperately need the 61. Thank you, Stefan. 29%, Dennis. Damn it. That guy's bleeding out his neck. That's very good. Stefan is still... Up. I'm worried about his armor, but my god, he still has 72. So, I shouldn't be worried. Barlow misses. Diagrin misses. Bit of a wet noodle fight, but I think we have them on the run. Raike wins this fight. Yes! And is now going to go for the flank. Beautiful. Dennis gets the kill! Let's go! And he doesn't get the second hit. That's under... That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Stefan gets his kill. And do I wander him in the middle? No. No, that'll be Digrin's job. Oh, but I could do it right now. And I... This dog. This dog has got to go. What is this dog doing? He's ruining everything. Poochie boy. Let's... Let's go. Please. I'm up to my haunches and hyenas here, Vic. Thank you, Barlow. And thank you, Digrin. Okay. The dog has been dealt with. And there is a poacher running away, and Stefan can't catch him. Uh, Raike will try. Oh, and he runs that way. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's what I like to see. Uh, can I move two spaces and throw a net on him? Uh, do I want to throw the net on him? Or can I get him with... Stefan going one, two, three, four. I'll wait and see if Stefan has the fatigue. He does not. How badly is 50 bucks of a net, or 70 bucks since we bought it expensively? How much do I need a poacher to die? Not that desperately. I think in an economic value sense, we don't desperately need the poacher, but Barlow. Is really freaking fast. Why not? Why not just stop him? With your body. You've got a little bit of armor. Digrin with the two hit kill. Let's go. And Raike will go after that poacher. It's over boys. We did it. First fight. First episode. Actually survived. We got a bunch of new friends, and we're building from the ground up. This shall be the beginning of the end. Hopefully the successful end, you know. That's that's what we're hoping. No, a lot of whiffed misses, but that's fine. Uh, even a dagger. Oh, that could actually kill us. Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. But Barlow counters and hits him back in the face. Beautiful. That was a little risky at the end, but level ups across the board, that's what I like to see. Absolutely beautiful, and we get paid for it, and we get more money, and loot, and money, and food, that's what I meant to say. Weapons-wise, I don't really care, but just, just beautiful. That's what we needed. 360 bucks. Sweet. Let's head back to town. Get paid. They have a new quest available. No, I'm not doing beasts. No, 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 no. Uh, we have enough money that I can consider getting someone new. And uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the level ups first. Stefan, congratulations on your level up. Nimble Dodge Tank. I'd really like to get some resolve, but you only have a plus two there. Do I go for the health roll? I think I go for the health roll. We don't need more fatigue. I think that's good enough for the moment. I think we go for the health roll and then eventually get resolve when needed. So, to start us off, do I go alert? Or do I go phalanx? Because we are going to be tanking with a shield. I think phalanx makes the biggest difference in the early game. Yep. Absolutely great pickup. And same thing with Digrin, Phalanx is the way to go. So we now have two bros with Phalanx. We have to remember to keep them next to each other because five melee defense per adjacent ally holding a shield who is also engaged in melee. So as long as these two guys are next to each other, they're set. Um, and while holding a shield and spear, additionally gain five melee skill 
for adjacent ally holding a shield who's also engaged in melee. So basically it's just stick together and win. Uh, Diagran is a medium tank, plus two defense, plus three health. Oh my goodness, we're getting bad rolls. Uh, do I go for the initiative to help with the medium armor, or do I just go for the melee skill so he's not a weak tank? Is that... Oh man, we rolled bad on everything. I think I go for the melee skill, which is weird to put on a tank. I think it's the right call, though. Raikate as a reach cleaver throw. I'm thinking we go recover. Actually, hybridization could be really good. Recover is not needed in the early game as much. Yep, we go hybrid. That means we get 10% of your base range skill as melee skill, so now he gets plus 4 melee skill. Um, additionally, while wielding throwing weapons, get 10% of your melee skill as range skill. So, hybridization is just basically the best way to build hybrids. Uh, and hybrids are best built with throwing weapons. So, yeah, that's just the way to go. PTR, wonderful, wonderful perk choices. And there we go, max rolls as usual. And what are we looking for? I said I wanted to go initiative, didn't I? For the overwhelm? No. I said I wanted to go maybe mind over body? Nope, I'm tripping out. It's fatigue. So the higher the fatigue, the higher recover. Oh, range defense could be good for Wind Reader. And a reach weapon attacks once a turn. Yeah, maybe I go for the range defense. Because he only has 80 base. Then he gets plus 10% of that. Then he gets plus th one third of his range defense skill when he does Wind Reader. And then he won't get shot to hell if he's a back ranker with no shield. Yep, I'm going to have to go full range defense. I wanted to go Fatigue, but I think we can sort it out. I think we can survive with not going Fatigue. If we got Rebound, we've got Vigorous Assault if needed. We've got Recover, actually. That's even better. Screw it. We go range defense. We go the full glass cannon build with a bit of defense, you know, a bit of defense. Uh, Dennis, what are we looking at? Crossbow Cook. Range defense is a bit lacking, but we do need it. And we go... Uh, not mind over body. We got recover, so we don't care. So we go fatigue. We don't need overwhelm, because that's not going to help us. We just go crazy on fatigue and then just shoot crossbows all day. Sweet. That's, that's perfect. Now, to start us off, though, as a crossbow build... Do we go recover first? Or do we go take aim? I think we go take aim because here's the thing. Take aim is so strong because it allows you to snipe kills that you desperately, desperately need. Obviously, you need a bit of accuracy to get those kills, but... It just seems like the right play. We don't have a crossbow yet. We will have to work on that. We don't have any crossbow bolts, no crossbow, but we will get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, Barlow with the Reach Flail. Let's go Attack, Fatigue. We don't have Rebound, so we can't be Fatigue Neutral, but we'll try our best. And other than that, do we just go Health? We could go Range Defense if we feel like we need it. It's not going to help the damage of the build. Do we need Overwhelm? Do we get... Uh, we don't get Overwhelm. Fresh and Furious works. Uh, do we get the Baffle thing? No, we don't. Okay, so I guess it's just melee skill, recover, and uh, fatigue, I mean. And let me just go health. We just go as tanky as we can get. And headshot chance sounds like a good start. Other than that, nine lives could keep you alive. Let's just go headshots. Let's do our best. And the party is looking that much nicer, especially the phalanxes. That's going to really hold us through the early game. Everything else is working through, and hybridization is also just really nice. Uh, in terms of money, we're doing okay to hire someone new. Not sure who to hire, but I'm looking for cultists and maybe, maybe monks and stuff. I don't know how early I need to get monks, but I'm thinking it's not too far off from here. As long as we start getting a bit more stable with our cash, monks sounds like a good idea. 
Holy crap, a random small town has an adventurous lady and a hunter. Who did you expect? Fair enough. And they want us to do beasts. Nope. No ways, Jose. And there's nothing good here for us. We were gonna go down to Thunfest to sell our uh, copper, but we don't have to anymore. Small fortifications are not gonna be helpful to us. I think we go back to Homewick. Yeah, maybe we'll get a quest out of here for next episode. Because we are running out of time a little bit. I'm not sure how the editing will go with it. Oh, there's nothing here. Alright, let's go to Sam Hook. We do have a little bit of camping to do. We have to salvage a bit of our tools. Uh, what's the quest available? No, no, I think that's Beasts. Uh, Caravan Two Days... Oh, I like that. I like that idea. Do we want to bring anyone along for this caravan? A fishmonger. Ah, oh, so much potential, but the wrong stars! No, and she's even talented! Oh, that sucks. No spears to even bring it home. Cleavers with the 10% bonus attack is not bad. Oh, such a missed opportunity there. Well, we're going to have to live without it. Uh, we will take this caravan quest next episode. We don't need to buy food because it's all dying anyways. Uh, we'll hold on to the grains and we'll have to buy food when we get there. But that should be it for the first episode today. We will be able to salvage a little bit along our caravan ride because none of these weapons are really that amazing for us. And a lot of armors we will not be using. Uh, including helmets as well. There we go. The base helmets aren't that helpful indeed. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the series so far. Please do leave a like and comment if you really enjoy it. And also please do remember that uh, you guys can join in the party. Uh, we might go through people a little quickly this series because of the sacrifice events. And how frequent they're going to be. So I'm already in dread of what's going to happen to this wonderful little party we've set up so far. Anything, anything can happen. And I'm, I'm worried. But, yes, please feel free to join your name to the list and we'll be happy to have you. Regardless, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. See yous.